Hi, I'm Mark Fletcher with Avaya Public Safety Solutions, and today we'll be talking about enterprise emergency services implementations and six simple steps to provide a safer work environment for your employees. Enhanced emergency services, regardless of where you are in the world, are about getting the right help to the right location and to the people in need of assistance quickly and accurately. This is referred to as location granularity and it can be broken down into two distinct areas. The first is one that is the most common and is the location granularity externally at the Public Safety Answer Point or 911-112 Center. These are the initial folks that answer the emergency calls, emergency call takers, and their job is to gather the information about the incident so the appropriate help can be assigned and get underway. The primary goal here is to establish what level of location granularity is required at this step in the process. Typically, a call taker needs to assign resources based on geography and a particular address. What is important to them is getting the correct information in the event of multiple addresses, multiple buildings, or multiple floors within a building. Once that information is collected, it's handed over to an emergency dispatcher who actually handles the assignment of resources. In many cases, but certainly not all, the emergency call taker could be the same person as the emergency dispatcher. Location within a building or a campus can be tricky. However, technology can assist in overcoming many of the pitfalls. Remote workers, however, pose a unique challenge in that their physical location may not be discoverable by the enterprise infrastructure. When considering remote worker coverage, it's a good idea to establish categories where specific solutions can be applied to users with specific needs. The three common categories for remote worker coverage are remote VPN users, typically users who work from home that have physical devices that rarely move. Remote nomadic users, users who work away from the office but typically work from multiple predictable locations. And finally, the remote road warrior, users that are constantly on the move and often connect through hotspots and other common infrastructure. The new trend in location granularity is internal location granularity. This defines the method of alerting internal staff that an emergency event has taken place and from precisely what location. The level of reporting that is needed internally will vary from enterprise to enterprise, but typically notification falls into the categories of internal emergency response teams, designated safety officers, and building security. But what do I report to these individuals? Useful information such as floor plans, hazardous material storage, and building maps for starters. However, the information that you can pass is practically unlimited. But what about after hours? Many buildings don't have 24-hour receptionists or security. This is where we solve the problem with the common, low-cost, yet informative wall display. Just like a fire alarm annunciation panel that are found in most buildings alert firefighters to the location of the fire, the Emergency Location Management, or ELM application, can advise public safety first responders exactly where the 911 call was placed in the building, as well as instructions on how to get there in the form of a map. This is why reporting the cube number on the external location granularity is really useless. Cubicle 2C231 is not information the emergency responder needs to get to the address of the person in need of help. Having that level of detail available when they arrive on scene is going to get them where they need to be quickly and efficiently. Once we've defined how we're going to respond, both internally and externally, we need to determine how we're going to locate devices on the network in order to report properly. Once again, we'll break our devices down into common categories that have similar location properties. The first are TDM phones. Typically, automatic location discovery is not available on a TDM device. However, you should be concerned about features such as virtual office or hoteling that allow users to move within a network. Typically, dealing with the location of these devices is a combination of change control management and manual entry of information into the location information database. Be sure to understand what you can and cannot do, and be sure that your plan accommodates the movement of TDM phones and users if applicable. Voice over IP devices have two identifying parameters, a MAC address and an IP address. 
These devices can be typically located on the network using some sort of automated fashion, and it's more a matter of how precise you want that location to be. For example, if you just need general zone level identification, such as a floor, and the IP address range defined in your network could easily place a device within a particular area on a particular floor, IP address mapping is typically available internally on the PBX. If that level of granularity doesn't provide the precision that you need, then the MAC address of each individual device can be correlated with a particular switch port on a data switch. The one caveat to this method is that the enterprise needs to maintain a wire map database of the floor, and if that database is not kept updated, location accuracy will suffer despite which solution you deploy. A new paradigm in infrastructure technology from companies such as Fibridge are adding technology to the jacks themselves. Using that technology could potentially assist in managing the cable plant wire map. Wireless LAN devices, although IP-enabled, pose a unique challenge as each individual device does not necessarily appear on the network on a particular switch port. Wireless LAN devices, including both telephones and computers, running soft phone applications, are becoming more popular and pose the next challenge in emergency service location management. When choosing a wireless LAN infrastructure, as well as your solution for emergency call management, Pay close attention to the API integrations the products support to ensure that wireless LAN devices can be discovered and reported as they traverse the network. Remote workers are typically hidden behind routers and home networks and are one of the most difficult users to manage today. In addition to these users becoming one of the fastest growing user communities, this creates a unique challenge for system administrators in managing how emergency calls are handled from these devices. Fortunately, we have the ability to group these users in a common community and provide unique call handling for emergency situations. We do this by using what we do know about their location. What we know is that we don't know their location and therefore need to route emergency calls from these devices to a Voice over IP Positioning Center or VPC that can provide emergency call termination to the appropriate agency. The typical VPC will provide remote workers with a web-enabled dashboard application that allows users to adjust their locations dynamically in the VPC database. If a remote user should make an emergency call, the PBX will route calls from the remote worker zone to the VPC for proper call handling. That same dashboard software can detect the move and prompt them for a new updated location. In the meantime, on-site notification and local awareness still occurs where policy and procedure can then take over to ensure the proper authorities were reached and help is on the way. As you define your plan for emergency call handling in your enterprise, walk through what happens when a user has an emergency. What type and who will your emergency on-site notification alerts go to? Do you need to use building level PS Alley or are new enhanced applications like Smart 911 in service in your area? Does your building have defined meeting points for public safety? These are predefined areas that public safety will respond to so they can meet up with your first responders internally and collect the additional detailed data about the location of the event. These areas should be clearly defined and well understood by internal individuals as well as public safety and be sure there's a written procedure that's been agreed to by all parties and well documented. For individuals that are notified internally, define the training that these particular individuals will need to be effective internal first responders, and don't forget about specialized first aid equipment they may need to have handy. If you're going to maintain a level of training, be sure this information is tracked and on file in case it's questioned at a later point in time. Keeping a solution tested and current is critical to maintaining a safe work environment. But it's important to remember that it's not just testing, it's the right testing that matters. Running many invalid tests over and over does not increase reliability. Before you test, what you need is to define a test plan. Before you can design a test plan, you need to define the flow of information. The best, well-written test plans usually originate from use cases. Use cases define typical and atypical emergency situations that might be encountered. They define what should happen and by whom and should be run regularly with a full review of the results. Find out what worked and what didn't and then revise the plan. And then start all over from scratch. Be sure to include your public safety officials in your planning. 
Typically, they'll have an individual specifically assigned to deal with this information and can often provide a liaison between public safety and commercial enterprise operators. In many cases, help is there for the asking, and moving forward, Nina will be raising awareness to the enterprise MLTS environment and their needs for remediation and testing. Speaking of Nina, what exactly is the legislative climate? As of now, the U.S. is the most active for MLTS legislation and regulatory issues. The National Emergency Number Association is responsible for representing enterprise MLTS users. As of June 2012, 18 states had some verbiage on the books. It should be noted, however, that only Michigan has a penalty defined for noncompliance. The largest liability concern should be the OSHA regulation that maintains employers must have a safe workplace environment. If you can't call emergency services to get assistance, or the location is not correctly reported, the question remains, are you in a safe place? Although that question has been asked before, it's never been asked of a jury. And as of to date, all cases have been settled outside of the courtroom for amounts that are rumored to be in the tens of millions of dollars. Unfortunately, because these cases have been sealed, the details have been locked away from public view and you have to leave it up to your own conscience on what you would award in punitive damages where a company failed to spend just a few thousand dollars on an emergency remediation plan and someone died. What you should do for your company is get legal advice and assess your exposure. When you remediate the problem, be sure to do it uniformly, keeping a similar level of accuracy across the network. This will ensure that you haven't isolated any particular group based on their geography and most importantly, to be sure to enlist public safety for their input and assistance. Let's talk for a minute about next generation emergency services. What you need to understand about Next Generation Emergency Services is that it's a model built with standards-based interfaces. It'll use SIP technology to provide multimodal session-based communications as well as location information. What exactly does that mean? It means that there's been an enormous change in how I get my information to the people that can help me. It's not about a telephone number referencing some obscure database that may or may not indicate where I am. It's about utilizing the data embedded in the enterprise network and planning for emergency services internally today. This will translate directly into next generation services externally tomorrow. Don't get caught up in the hype. Transition migration plans are not needed as they are actually built in to the next generation architecture. When the network is ready, send the data. In the meantime, use the data yourself now. Avaya believes that education is the key tenet behind Avaya's public safety presence. We maintain weekly industry-leading podcasts and blogs that demonstrate our mindshare and technical acumen across the portfolio. You can find us on the web at www.avaya.com forward slash public safety and the Avaya Connected blogs are available at www.avaya.com forward slash Fletcher. This has been Enterprise Emergency Services Implementation in Six Simple Steps to a Safer Work Environment. I'm Mark Fletcher with Avaya Public Safety Solutions. Thanks for listening.